finally on the bottom shelf of this book of uh, bookshelf number one. Up until here, our middle grade, this is romance, and then these are just random titles of different genres. I honestly don't know my thinking process on having them all on the same shelf. Fun stuff for us to go through. The Haunting of Sunshine Girl by Paige McKenzie. This is a middle grade haunting story that I really want to read. So we're keeping it flipped by Van Dranken. Well then, Van Dranken. I just got this, so we're keeping it. Goosebumps, The Girl Who Cried Monster by R.L. Stein. I really want to read every Goosebumps book. So far I've read one. Go me. <laughs> so I'm going to keep that one too. Uh, Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. I don't remember what this one's about. I know that I got it because it's Neil Schusterman and I've heard really good things. But I'm going to put that in the chopping block. Put that on the chopping block. Then there's Horizon by Scott Westerfield. So I got this because it's a survival story. Middle grade survival story. But I have tried to read Scott Westerfield before and I did not like his writing. Okay, chopping block it is. Cloud Wish by Fiona Wood is a new to me book, so we're keeping it. Along with Nightmares, The Sleepwalker Tonic by Jason Segal and Chris Miller. So I just read uh, Everything You Need to Know About Nightmares and How to Defeat Them by these two authors and it was so cute. I just really loved it. Therefore I'm keeping it. Then we have The Extraordinary Adventures of Alfred Kropp. This is a middle grade dystopian hero. The unexpected geeky kid becomes a hero somehow. I got it mostly because it's by Rick Yancey and Rick Yancey wrote my favorite series of all time, the Fifth Wave series. Go check it out if you haven't. So I'm keeping that for sure. Uh, Tomorrow Girls and Disappeared. I get these ones confused a lot so we're gonna put it on the shopping block as well. Wishing Day is a new to me book. Going Where It's Dark by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. I think I just wanted to read all of her books but since I've only read Shiloh and I really do appreciate Shiloh I'm not sure if I'm going to like this, so we'll see. It'll be on the chopping block. A Dog's Life by Anne M. Martin. I am keeping this because it's about a dog. The Castle in the Mist by Amy Ephron. I read the first chapter of this and really want to finish it sometime. Don't know when, but yeah. The Butterfly Jar is a book of poems, and they're small poems for kids. So I feel like this would be really helpful in teaching a kindergarten class. Definitely keeping it. Forever in Love by Suzanne Colestini. Hey, I have two of her books. I actually think... I have three of her books. Okay. But I'm keeping Forever in Love. Then Something Like Fate by Suzanne 
Colestini. Uh, originally I got this knowing that there was some kind of, like, the best friend is in love with the best friend's boyfriend. But I don't think I want to read any more love triangles ever. Or about a cheating spouse. Like, that just gets really under my skin. So I'm going to put that on the chopping block. Okay. Then we have The Season of You and Me by Robin Constantine. This one I'm keeping. It's brand new to me. Rachel Hawkins. Royal. Royals by Rachel Hawkins. So I have since getting this. I've heard that it is part of a series so I'm gonna investigate that if it is then I probably won't read it then there's 10 things we did and probably shouldn't have by Sarah Man Manowski I'm very sorry uh I'm gonna keep that one though then there's Summer Love by Jill Sinatopia I'm going to put that on the chopping block. I thought it would be really fun because it's like a, you pick the story, but I haven't ever thought to pick it up, and I've had it for a while, so. It's Not You, It's Me by Allison Rushby. Um, this is about exes who are on the same flight. And she wants closure, but I think they might want to get back together. I don't know for sure. Two-Way Street. This is a book about exes going on a road trip together. And I'm so excited for that one. There's Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. Um, it's a love story with travel around Europe so yes anything with travel is definitely up my alley then there's 20 times a lady by Karen Bosnick this one is so cute I haven't finished it but I have started it it's about this girl who thinks that if you can't sleep with if you sleep with 20 people that 20th person is the person you're supposed to marry but she gets drunk one night and sleeps with her boss. And she doesn't want to marry her boss. So now she's going back and visiting exes to find out why it didn't work with you with them and to try and get it to work. It kind of reminds me of What's Your Number? The movie, which I absolutely loved. Uh I don't know why I put it down or why I haven't finished it, but I'm really enjoying it. It's just taking me forever to pick it up again. Okay, and then these ones are no longer romance, and I have no idea why they're on this shelf. But we'll go with it. So there's The Sorority by Tamara Thorne, which is a sorority horror story. That's all I have to know. Now you see her. I just got this, so I'm keeping it. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Is a dark academia. I think it's a, an adult dark academia book, and that's the only thing I know. Never World Wake. Uh... I'm going to put this one on the chopping block, too, because I thought that it was going to be, like, the book 10, which is over there. It's one of my favorites. Uh, but I thought it would be, like, a horror story about a slasher teen, teen slasher cheesiness. And I've heard different things. So we're going to read the back and maybe look up some uh, reviews and such to see and then a map for wrecked girls by jessica taylor just got so we're keeping it feral youth by sean david hutchinson and like nine different authors 
I've had this on my shelf for so long, but I really do want to read it. The Girl in 6E. I haven't heard many people talk about it, but it's a thriller about this woman who only has three rules. Don't leave my apartment, never let anyone in, and don't kill anyone, but rules are meant to be broken. So, yeah, I have to read that. The Deceivers is a con artist academy, so I'm going to keep that. A Dog's Way Home is going to break my heart, but I have to keep that. The Nowhere Girls is a new-to-me book, so I'm keeping it. I'm keeping the rest. So, we have a few to go through today. So, these are on the chopping block this week. A Neverworld Wake by Marshall Pessel. The first thing you must do is stay calm. Panic will get you nowhere. It's been one year since graduation and Patrice has mixed feelings about joining her friends for a weekend get a reunion. She's right to be worried. After a night out, they narrowly avoid a collision with a car on a deserted road. Back at the mansion where they are staying, a mysterious man knocks on the door during a raging storm. He tells them they must make a choice. One of them will live and the rest will die. The decision must be unanimous. Soon time beckons and Patrice and her friends are forced to repeat that dreadful day so many times they lost count. With each replay, events twist and fears come alive in horrifying ways. This nightmare, this nothingness, this is Neverworld Wake. Okay, so I've never read the entire synopsis of this book, but that sounds amazing. Even with the reliving time trope, usually, fun fact, usually I hate the reliving of time, like the reliving the day over and over and over and over again. I hate that in books. But in movies, I live for that. I love it. Okay, and then there's Summer Love by Jill Salop Santopolo. Okay, and it's really just a choose your own ending type of book that I'm not interested in. Royals. This is part of a series but it's the first in a series and both books sound really good there's royals by rachel hawkins and her royal highness by rachel hawkins something like fate by suzanne colestini i knew going when i found this book i knew that the best friend and the boyfriend liked each other that's why they're holding hands behind the girlfriend's back. And I have read books where there's cheating or like love triangles done right. It's okay. I, what I look for in my like, cheating or love triangle books is for the cheater to change to feel sorry and for realizing that it's a it was a mistake even if it didn't work out with his girlfriend or her boyfriend you know the cheater's significant other even if that relationship didn't work out because of the cheating at least the cheater grows from it. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just, I don't know. I don't even think I'm going to like this one. I just read a book where cheating was a big aspect of it, and it just was not done right because she never learned her lesson. She kept cheating, and I'm still very upset about that book. But I will try and give this one a chance. So, 
Aaron and Lanny are best friends and total opposites when it comes to everything, including boys. But then Aaron starts dating Jason, and from the minute Lonnie meets him, there is an undeniable chemistry. As junior year ends and Aaron goes away for the summer, Lonnie is left behind with Jason. Will Lonnie be able to put her friendship first, or will she be tempted by the guy who may just be the love of her life? I think I'm going to give it a shot. I read this little ex, uh, this little expert, expert, it's not called an expert, is it? It's part of the book that they put right here, and from this little part, it's the, it seems like the first time that Jason and Aaron, no, Jason and Lonnie, uh, hold hands and the entire time she's very Aaron uh, Lonnie is very nervous about Aaron finding out and she's very nervous about betraying her best friend like that and that's the kind of response that I would expect from a book like this even if they cross the line which I'm sure they will I want both of them to feel, to feel sorry, to feel guilty, to, you know, change and grow as people and as characters. So I'm hoping that's what I get out of this. Then there's Going Where It's Dark by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. Uh, I just recognized the author. I'm not really interested in this book, so we're going to unhaul it. Disappeared. This has a lot of different layers in it. It's about uh, Sarah's best friend disappearing and then her brother falling in love with Pearl. And then she gets a death threat and clues to find her best friend and... It seems like there's a lot going on, so of course I want to read it. Then Tomorrow Girls. In a terrifying new world, four girls must depend on one another if they want to survive. Disaster and destruction are all 13-year-old Louisa has ever known, but now she and her best friend Maddie are among the lucky few being sent to boarding school far from home. Finally, a taste of freedom. Country Manor School isn't perfect. The girls' roommates are tough to get along with, and the school's hard, hard work. Still, Louisa loves CMC, CMS, the survival skills classes, the fresh air. She doesn't even miss not having TV or the internet or any contact with home. It's for their own safety, after all. Or is it? Okay, that sounds really good. Horizon... By Scott Westerfield. I don't like Scott Westerfield's writing. So I think I'm just going to let that one go too. Then we have Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. So this is about a ship. The southern part of the trench. A brilliant high school student. With odd behavior. Ugh. I don't think I'm actually that interested in it. Okay, so this is kind of like, it takes place in two different worlds, kind of. The real world and then this mentally ill kid, Caden, comes up with this his own world on a ship. I'm not sure if this is one that I'm gonna love. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel where we're always talking about books and sometimes we have guest stars like Hubby Man and puppies. Well, they're not puppies, but they think they are. So if you tell them the truth, then it would break their heart and you wouldn't want to do that, would you? If you've stuck with me through this entire video, please put a heart in
in the comments below. It really does help me.